Well, here I am sitting in St. James's on oh, not a bad afternoon, looking at uh, Locks the Hatters next door, and on my left, Bay Brothers in Rudd. So if you want a new hat, or you want a bottle of wine, you're in the right place. But if you want something nice to eat, here's the place you should be, Boulistan. Recently reopened, famous name, Marcel Boulistan, the first man on television to cook. And here we are in the restaurant named after him. Joel Kissin, who owns the restaurant, is going to talk to us in a moment a little bit about what made him use the name Boulistan and a little about the ethics of Boulistan and the type of food he's going to serve here. Wonderful courtyard at the back of here. We can sit and eat out our fresco when the weather's fine. Altogether, I'm looking forward to my visit. Joel Kissin, welcome back to London. Well, restaurant-wise, welcome back to London. Why Boulistan? Well, I was just thinking about what shall I do next in London, and I thought to myself, what happened to the Boulistan? The restaurant closed in '94. I was very sad when it closed down, and so I thought I'll just try and register it, and I did, and I was successful in doing that. And then I thought, I'd better find a premises, but before that, I started researching and looking at the books, and I actually got very excited about it, because when you read his books, um, they're so prescient of, you know, of what food is about today. I mean, there's so much in there that is totally contemporary with what we all want to eat today. And so as I delved in more and more, I realized that uh, I thought I could do something very interesting. Well, Marcel Boulistan, of course, was, was quite a figure for many years in London. He was one of the leading lights. He was. He, uh, he was a writer. Then he became a food writer. He wrote uh, and introduced a lot of uh, English and British women to uh, French food. And he did a number of sequels. He did about a dozen uh, cookery books. And then uh, he was the world's first TV chef on the BBC, 1937 to 1939. Um, Elizabeth David was a great admirer of his, many food writers. So he was really quite a, a large influence on, on food in this country. So we're back to the beginning, really. I think uh, back in a, gone round in a circle, yes, possibly, yes. Absolutely, I think the people are picking up very quickly. They understand, everybody understands the Boulistan, a very famous restaurant. And everybody is really understanding our concept, which is a, a French tradition from a famous chef called Boulistan. So what are the dishes you're most proud of on your menu? Um, there are so many. Uh, Eau is something I've, I've enjoyed reintroducing to menus in London. It's a, a poached egg uh, in, a, in a consomme jelly. Uh, for some people it's a bit of a stretch because it's served cold, but I absolutely love it and it always be on the menu. We are doing classic things like uh, cassoulet, which again I'm very proud of. Here we have a, a duck cassoulet. Very nice indeed. Uh, we are doing simpler dishes, simple, such as a simple grilled fish or uh, um, you know, a, a steak and so on. Um, and then desserts, we've got a, a tarte légère, which is rather like a, a very simple tarte fino pomme, but just a little bit thicker, mm -hmm. um, and so on and so on. Where did you do your training? On Spain. Okay. On Barcelona. I come from Barcelona. I've been trained on a three-star mission chef uh, called Jean-Paul Vinay, uh -huh. which he was a head chef on El Bouillet, the best restaurant in the world. Absolutely. So, and then basically he was my French, uh, my French mentor, and now here I am in England. <laughs> Are you enjoying it? Absolutely. I think England is a beautiful country, and I'm in, in a big progress of uh, evolution of the kitchen. And has it been difficult settling in, or have you got a good team now? No, I think we have a fantastic team. We all know Bill from before, so I think it's, uh, it's been much easier than what it would have been a different opening. Tell, tell me a little bit more about how the restaurant works, because you have restaurant at the back, you have that wonderful courtyard there uh, for alfresco eating, then you have a little cafe thing in the front. Yes. How well, does that work? Well, the idea was uh, we've got the restaurant in the front. The previous restaurant that had been in this location had nothing at the front, just an enormous bar. And I realised that by making the bar itself smaller, I could, I could fit a small cafe in there. Because we're in a slightly isolated part of, the, of London, I mean, not, not, we're not totally isolated, but somewhat isolated, uh, I felt that uh, I wanted to introduce a bit of passing trade. So we've got uh, in the front part of the cafe uh, will be a lot of the same dishes that uh, are being served in the restaurant, but also simpler things such as just a traditional crop and sewer and so on. So I could come there and have one course and a glass of wine? Sure. You Where can come have a, a bowl of soup de poisson, you can, uh, you, know, you, know, you can have a crop and sewer, you can have a salad, or indeed you can have a full meal if you want. Now you also have a rather nice room downstairs. How many does that seat? Uh, we seat up to 40 downstairs. 
uh, on uh, two tables or, or more tables for more people. Um, it's a very pretty room with a fireplace and uh, I think got a lot going for it. I have to ask you, you as the man that opened dozens of restaurants in London before you went to New York, opened in New York, you've come back, um, what made you want to have your own restaurant and be in the front as it were? after all that admin work you must have been doing? Probably extreme stupidity, I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, once this business gets in your blood, you know, you know that, it, it's hard to get it out again. It's an exciting business uh, when it goes well. Uh, and, and I love the business and I love food and I love the whole, everything to do with it. So I, I kind of got bored with the semi-retirement and decided to, to come back again. Joel, thank you for your time. I know you've had a, a busy lunchtime and you probably want to get ready for your prep for this evening, but thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much. So would you like to would you like to have your own restaurant one day? Um Well I'm gonna be an inventor. Are you? Yeah. What sort of things are you going to invent? I'm going to invent a machine that can grant wishes. Wow.